couple of minutes. All my signees sit at your table. All of you can sit, sit at the front row or second row so you can come up and, and sit at the middle of the side. So all of you get in the get out you can get out pretty quick. Coaches, I speak for all the coaches that don't have a chance to talk today. You couldn't be prouder to be your uh, 
your child's coach and what they're going to accomplish not only in their sport, but after they're done with their sport. It's just going to be amazing because they're wonderful people they are. So why don't we get started with the brief? So I'll give a hand to Sterling was a defensive end, and every day he would 
love me and say, Coach, I can be linebacker. And I would say, I don't think so. I'm like, I'm not so sure. And then you'd be like, no, I promise you I'm your next linebacker. I'm like, you know what, you just keep grinding and working with defense and then we'll see. So what did he do? Because he's coachable, he went back to defense and and then a few days later, coach, I'm still, still going to be your linebacker. And so eventually, we gave him that shot of linebacker, and the, kind of the rest is history. You know, I mean, he was exactly right. So for coaches, it's a great, it's a great example. But sometimes you do need to listen to your players because he's exactly right. He knew what he could do, which is really, really cool. Um, Sterling, though, his junior year, some of you may not know, his junior year, he started a few games, but he also backed up some. And um, never once did he complain. And um, he might, they might have bugged him because he could be a competitor, but he was the ultimate teammate and there every single day working. And I learned a lot by watching him and how he handled that. And he bided his time and, of course, took over the entire team, the only defensive side, and it was just unbelievable. I will remember his work ethic. You know, after, uh, after almost 30 years of coaching, next year's year 26 or 27 for me, and, and there's one or two things I remember each player for. Uh, and that is going to be it for, for Sterling. He was a tremendous worker. He still is. Right now, I'll be sitting in my office answering emails, and I have a window. Um, yeah, I think I have a window right there, and it overlooks the practice field, and there is Sterling every day after school working on his own, and that kind of sums up you know, who he is. Multi-sport guy. Um, he was a great wrestler, too. Um, and then, last thing I'll say about Sterling, is there's never a topic in the entire world that Sterling does not have an opinion on. So don't ask him about anything. Don't ask him about anything going on in the world because you'll be stuck in the next 30 minutes, okay? And he will tell you. Uh, but he can make a friend with a tree. I'm telling you that right now. But that's a wonderful part of his personality, too. He's going to uh, TC. He's going to play linebacker there. And we could not be proud of him. Y'all get a hand for Sterling. All right, give it up for Sterling. Yes. But he wanted to make sure that he um, 
met his academic desires and his soccer desires. And that can be a really hard thing to find for boys soccer. And this guy went out and did it, you know, whenever he told me he went to Washington, Wash U, I was like, oh, awesome, man, you know, Washington, that's a great state. And it turns out it's in Seattle. So his dad said this no. And I think when you hear this, you sort of understand what I mean about the band athlete, combining superb academic support, uh, performance with athletic performance. And so what is Wash U? Um, they're a pretty amazing school. They're ranked number 14 academically nationally. Their coach has been there for 24 years and has never had a losing record. They won their division last year, the UAA, which includes nerd schools like Carnegie Mellon, University of Chicago, NYU, Emory, etc. Also, they were peak ranked at number three nationally in the NCAA Division Three last year. Further, and this tells you the company that he's about to keep. His incoming class of players includes a national player from Barbados and the Minnesota Gatorade Player of the Year for 2021. And I think that's huge. And I just want to stop by saying, you know, a lot of coaches talk about every year we're building something and you're a really important brick in the program and we're going to build on what Ethan did. And I think Ethan's bigger than just a brick. And I believe every boy, every, all of you up there agree with me on what this guy is. He's more than just a brick. Ethan is the foundation of the future at this school for Vanderbilt Soccer. And because of him, we all know in our room that we're going to succeed next year and we're going to continue to succeed in the future. So please, give it up for Ethan. Thank you. 
Tams in going into the first round of playoffs. She is one of those players that you tell her something and she does it 100%. Um, she is completely and utterly uh, capable of ever, everything she sets her mind to. Um, she's one of those players that you never forget coaching because she will listen to you and go in and do anything you ask for 150%. Um, I'm so proud of you, Addie. You have done amazing things. You are strong, confident, and very independent woman. And I am so lucky to have coached you over these four years. I can't imagine you not being here next year. Uh, but I know you're going to uh, accomplish way more things up in Chicago, and I can't wait to come visit. And we're just all super proud of you. So, good one more minute.
uh, by her camp. And I was like, look at this girl, she's fun, you know, she's got that pet. And then I saw her play, and then, wow, you know, it just took all that info right there and then to a whole other level with this extra effort. Extremely fast, extremely um, intense. And so it was really exciting when I got to see that. The other part of the sad part about that is when she tore her ACL and we got that information. And everybody extremely hurt for Brooke. But the one thing I'm going to say about Brooke and, and part of her journey is that smile, that enthusiasm never left her at all. The, the team was first. She put herself there. She went ahead and you know gave everything that she had to recover to get herself back on the floor for her senior year. And she made great contributions at the end of the season. And so thinking about overcoming and thinking about her journey and her story that she'll have to tell. And she, you know, and although it was not what she wanted or what any of us wanted, she took what she had and she took her personality and was able to strive through that. And extremely proud of that and you should be extremely proud of that. <laughs> Mary Harn Baylor is getting a great player. And when we look at that, I'm going to read to Brooke has a lot of accomplishments as well. Brooke is a three-year varsity player and captain, a team MVP, first and second team all-district, academic all-district for three seasons, and then most importantly, she's a second to none or seven men. I want to thank Brooke and her, her parents for again the support that you have as you coming in as your coach in these last two years and this is everything that you guys have given. Um, congratulations, Brooke. I know that you will be a great player for Mary Hart. You'll be a great teammate, just like you were for us here. So congrats. Uh, she did come from a soccer background. She 
He's got an amazing stride. A lot of those soccer runners or soccer players come in with uh, an amazing pace and an amazing stride. Um, easy to work with. Uh, her first high school 5K experience was, I think, like a like mid 24. We added this ridge, which is a very hard course, but respectable. And she's come uh, quite a long way uh, since then. Uh, so the transformation, I think, really came in the summer of, of 2020. She was able to log uh, over 300 miles, I think 301 to be exact, in a 10 week period, which uh, summer of 2020, we, we had some extra time, and so she went out there and got it done. Most of those miles with uh, her, her training buddy, Ivana Klaus, which I'm sure is up there, some, who is up there somewhere. Uh, those two are, are uh, thick as thieves, uh, everything together. Um, she joined our 300 mile club for the first time. Uh, the next summer, we all did uh, over 400 miles which is amazing. Uh, she's the quintessential teammate, folks. Uh, she never misses a practice. Uh, she's always running with someone, always talking with someone, always ready to put Taylor Swift on the Spotify. Uh, <laughs> we love our, our Swifties, <laughs> the XC. Uh, she, um, she was always up for the challenge of, uh, of a hard workout, uh, and, and she couldn't be more supportive of her teammates. Uh, folks, she looks after her coaches uh, as well. This is, Kind of unique, but but last year during AP1, you know, most of my most of my students on, on Zoom, uh, people would stay behind and, and ask questions, and I noticed Casey was still there. And somebody else would sign off, and Casey was still there. And somebody else would sign off, and then it's just Casey. And I'm like, all right, Casey, you know, what, what questions do you have about you know rotational inertia? And she was like, nothing. I just want to make sure. I want to see if you're having a good day. <laughs> I was like, uh, Casey, I am. Thank you so much. Are you having a good day? Uh, and and I, you know what, I really I appreciated those more than you know, and, and that was more often than not, Casey was on afterwards, uh, uh, you know, coaching me up, so I appreciate that. Folks, that's just the, that's just the kind of person uh, that she is. Um, another interesting fact about Casey that some of her teammates not even know, might not even know is that she is a uh, third degree black belt in Taekwondo. She is also uh, a Taekwondo instructor. I knew that was gonna happen. She, uh, she, I don't know how she does it, honestly. Uh, all those hours of, of running that I give her, and then on top of that, she's, she's, uh, she's, she's teaching and she's, she's working uh, uh, on her own craft in a whole other discipline, which is just wild. So that's, that's remarkable. Um, Casey, uh, I'll sum up by saying, I wanna thank you so much for being such a great person, a genuine person, a great student athlete, a model for, for everybody else in the program. Um, I appreciate it. I know your teammates appreciate it. They love you. You're well loved. You're, this is pirate man. It's scary. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and thank you so much for giving so much to this program, okay? Uh, I know you're going to do great things. Uh, and, and she's a future Southwestern pirate, uh, but forever a writer. Folks, give it up for Casey Gilbert. I'm going to ask the parents to uh, Patrick. I hate you. I knew 
knew what that meant the first time I ever watched Bryce play. But Bryce is one of the most explosive point guards I've had at Vanderbilt. Uh, and that's, that's saying a lot of all the players that come through. Bryce could, he's basically the, the, the straw that starts the drain. Uh, with him, he came in, played, played some minutes on our team that were 33 and 3, uh, undefeated district champs, regional quarterfinalists. So he got to play a part of that. Uh, and was really a big part. And then the transition, when that group graduated, he took over, and basically I said, here's the keys to the car. If you're playing point guard position, he is our floor captain. Uh, and he accepted that role and played it fantastic. It was a very, was kind of a thorn in the side of every district coach because here's an unassuming kid that's absolutely explosive and really had that blow by capability to get to the rim. And then you wouldn't look, you look at him and he never got it in the game, but he jumps out of the gym. He would go in and he dunked in pregame, and, the, and all the coaches were always looking at him going, that's your point. You know, kind of, you know, what kind of steroids is he on? He's like, nope, he just works that hard. Um, but really, really excited for him. Last year, he was named first team all district. Uh, this year, he was second team all district. Last year, he was voted by his teammates as team MVP. Uh, he's going to lead in the top, or he's going to lead top five career in assists, which as a point guard, that's that's kind of second guess, but he's also one of our leading scorers for the last two years. So uh, I can't say enough about Bryce. Uh, just an absolute, in the, in the coaching world, he's a, he's a professional. With the exception of him being hurt missing a few games, I don't remember Bryce missing practice. Um, and to be up here every morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock, ready to go. And that was, that was always right. Always working, always trying to, to improve his game. Uh, really put in the hours, and it's paid off. A lot of time in the weight room, and so really, really proud of Bryce and weight. He has really developed over the last three years that he's been with us, and we're really going to miss him next year. So, uh, once again, Bryce Clyde. Thank you. 